could we continue to be human beings who are working to improve life for ourselves and others in all kinds of ways, but who were rooted in the fundamental knowledge that on, that on an essential level, that in terms of that which truly makes us happy and is truly fulfilling and truly liberating, that on that level, nothing is missing and nothing else needs to be added and nothing needs to change. That's really the, the inquiry question that we're all being invited into. Could I be a big yes, no matter what's happening on a relative level from one moment to the next? Welcome to Meditation Changes Everything with spiritual teacher Craig Hamilton, a podcast exploring the deeper potentials of meditation practice and how it can change every aspect of human life. In this episode, Craig dives into how we think about happiness. Most of us tie it to external events, like getting a raise or hearing good news. In other words, our happiness is dependent on our circumstances. But what if true happiness didn't depend on anything outside of us, or even on how we feel? Imagine being so deeply aligned with the fundamental yes at the heart of life that nothing could overshadow your profound sense of well being. This radical possibility is what Craig refers to as unconditional happiness and is the essence of true spiritual freedom. Today, he shares an approach to meditation that can take us beyond life's ups and downs into a stable awareness of the inherent goodness of life itself. We hope you enjoy the show. Here's Craig. So this practice of being an unconditional yes sounds very simple. But as we get into it, we find that we are encountering this deep insistence or just this unquestioned belief or assumption that it's really core to the entire human condition, which is this, it's this idea that, that circumstances are what makes us happy or that circumstances are what need to change in order for us to be fulfilled, be fully alive, be content, be happy, be enlightened, awakened, free, that somehow that whatever, whatever it is that we're seeking, whether it's kind of a relative peace and contentment or a profound spiritual awakening to the glory of our true nature, anywhere in between, whatever, whatever it is that we're hoping to attain or get to somehow is currently being blocked by circumstances of some kind. And that means, and by circumstances, I mean that in a really broad way. So I'm talking about our external circumstances, like, you know, I don't have enough free time or I don't have, I'm not in the right primary relationship or I don't have enough emotional support or, you know, I'm too financially insecure or I'm not in the right job or I'm not living in the right kind of place or, you know, and, and any kind of external circumstance that we imagine if it would only all line up, then we'd be in a position to really, then we'd be, you know, and, and again, we don't necessarily think this through in some rational way. It's just kind of the, it's the bedrock of human existence and human striving is like somewhere out there is this better moment where then I'll be able to let go fully and give myself fully and be, you know, 
release all of my neuroses and and self doubts and and self concerns and fears, and I'll just be able to fully live some much greater kind of life, inner life. I'll have a very different inner experience of life. So there's so there are all those external circumstances that are just kind of assumed as obstacles to the great possibility of our life. But then there, are, it can also be, you know, maybe if maybe it's not so much externalized, but there, are, there's kind of an internal circumstances that we that that sort of operate in the same way. So we imagine that. Again, not necessarily consciously. We wouldn't necessarily write all this down if we thought about it. But if we look at kind of the unconscious operating system of our human psyche, it's it's like I feel I still feel stuck, or I I'm plagued by kind of self criticism and self doubt, or I'm still kind of too afraid of to really like give myself fully or, you know, my mind is too often, you know, meditate in meditation. We think, well, my mind's just too active. I have a monkey mind and therefore I, I can't really fully meditate until I figure out how to get this mind to quiet down. So our, our inner circumstances can be like our thought patterns our emotional patterns, our relationship to our thoughts and emotions, or even just kind of a fundamental sense. And, 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 it, and it makes sense if we look at it. I mean, it's, it seems plausible. We think, well, happiness is a feeling. It's happiness is feeling good. And how could I feel good if I feel bad? I mean, that's rational, <laughs> right? It sounds totally reasonable proposition. So, so we think, well, therefore I have to get, I have to stop feeling bad in any way in order to feel good in the big way, which would be sp my spiritual freedom, my spiritual awakening and, and, and fullness. Like that, this higher possibility of, of a kind of illumined consciousness, a free, experience of great and profound inner freedom and even the joy and the bliss that comes with it like those things could only exist in the absence of things like anxiety tension grief doubt fear etc so clearly these inner circumstances i have meaning my emotional habits and patterns are definitely an obstacle to that that pot that very positive experience of life. How could it be any other way? It seems like that must be how it is. So I'm saying that the the you know many of us on the spiritual path can at least start to challenge the idea that outer circumstances maybe are not what needs to shift in order to be spiritually free we can at least start to say well okay if it's really spiritually free i must be able to do it no matter what my outer circumstances are otherwise it's not free it's dependent on circumstances so we can often get there in our inquiry but then getting to the place where we can say oh wow what if what if i could be spiritually free independent of all of my inner circumstances meaning how I'm, how I feel, how I've been conditioned to react to things, my inner emotional ups and downs and reactions and my monkey mind and my negative thought patterns and whatever else our whole inner world is made up of. You know, what if none of that was an obstacle to my unconditional happiness at being alive? And that's, that's a harder one to swallow. But honestly, both of them are kind of hard to swallow. You know, how can I have it be a big yes to negative circumstances? Or how, how can I remain? How can I see life as, po you know, fundamentally positive and even amidst really difficult negative circumstances? And so all of that seems reasonable. And yet... 
when we begin to spiritually awaken, when we, when we have even a glimpse of our true nature beyond the mind. Inherent in that awakening is the discovery that Oh, wow, life, existence, consciousness, this whole event, being alive is already utterly a positive event. It's beyond, like positive doesn't do it justice. It's, it's a beautiful, miraculous, extraordinary thing. Just existence, existence itself. The, light, the experience of life itself, the, the life force that's flowing through us, the, just the, the evolutionary force moving in the cosmos, this amazing event that is happening right now, always, in every moment, is just brings tears to our eyes when we, when we see it for what it is. This, this is why words like sacred were invented. It's why words like sacred, holy, divine were invented to, to say, no, there's some, this is, this is a, you know, none of the secular language quite does it justice. It's so extraordinary and, and so utterly transformational in its discovery. And we're discovering something that is unconditional, meaning not dependent on something else. We're discovering that life existence, our very own being, who we are in our essence, is sacred, divine, extraordinary, beautiful, beyond comprehension. And that that's what this always already is, this experience of being alive. It's not the only thing we realize, or many, many aspects of spiritual awakening and realization that are, you know, we could talk about for a long time, but I, I, I will continue to talk about for a long time. But it's rooted in spiritual awakening. It's not rooted in unenlightened consciousness, convention, a conventional relationship to life. It's, it's anchored in the other side. It's anchored in the goal. It's anchored in the possibility. It's anchored in the realization. And then we're trying to practice stepping directly into that realization through our practice, aligning with this deeper truth through how we practice. Just take the position, assume for a moment that this moment is it. This moment's already whole and complete and nothing's missing from it and nothing about it needs to change. It's already got everything you need. So we're just taking the position We're we're stepping into that perspective and exploring our experience from that perspective, instead of from the conditioned perspective we already have, the, the, the more conventional perspective, which is that, well, of course, not everything is, <laughs> is great. And of course, I've got all, you know, all kinds of circumstances, inner and outer, that could be better. Like, of course there are, there always are, there always will be, could be much better circumstances than these. And we can always, because we're creative beings who sense possibility and partially because we can sense into really higher profound possibilities, we therefore are always comparing the way we experience this moment to those higher possibilities and go, well, I'm not there yet, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, this isn't it. This couldn't be it, that's for sure, because I know I can see how great it could be. So we're in these practices, we're just we're short circuiting all of that circuitry. We're just no, just right now, this moment, this experience. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing missing on a fundamental level. And and take the position that even if things are very hard for you, or even if you're having a really hard time, that fundamentally still, that's not an obstacle to this deeper knowing of something that, that makes us unconditionally happy in the face of everything. 
because and why see because that could sound very naive like well spiritual people are very naive they're saying that you can be unconditionally happy even when things are really bad that's just that's just uh you're just cutting off you're dissociating you're spiritual bypassing you're you're uh it's pollyanna thinking you know you got to face the gritty bad realities well and life is full of gritty bad realities that we do need to face and and work to change and improve about the world about our own lives for sure but could we continue to be human beings who are working to improve life for ourselves and others in all kinds of ways but who were rooted in the fundamental knowledge that on, that on an essential level that in terms of that which truly makes us happy and is truly fulfilling and truly liberating that on that level nothing is missing and nothing else needs to be added and nothing needs to change that's really the the inquiry question that we're all being invited into could i be a big yes no matter what's happening on a relative level from one moment to the next you know and and i just want maybe to to end my brief talk here with a story from my recent experience because I, you know i've been teaching this for a long time it's been the found, the ground of my experience for a longer time but you know i'm a human being and like i always kind of wondered how strong would my big yes to life my unconditional yes to life be in the face of like a true life tragedy like if i found out i was going to die very soon would it hold up you know would my teaching hold up would my practice hold up would it you know or would something like that just flip the whole game upside down and then i would feel like a hypocrite <laughs> you know i wonder i wondered that not just to be an honest you know vulnerable person of course i don't still don't know the answer because i haven't en- endured a, any kind of ma- what i would call a major tragedy like that but a close friend of mine last year you know, got diagnosed with a kind of cancer that they said was very hard to fight and you know he of course was determined to fight it and i really encouraged him to and supported him to do everything he could to try to try to win his cancer battle but he deteriorated quite fast and what, you know as it set in he was kind of faced with this exact moment and it was so amazing to me to see it all play out how uh a spiritually awake person who really ha- he has lived his life as a big yes and really been true to true to everything I'm speaking about here you know rooted in the unconditional happiness of his true nature independent of all the changing circumstances of life and and he just so wholeheartedly said wow well i don't know what death is you know certainly to my mortal self it doesn't sound great <laughs> and you know there's there was grief and you know letting go and all kinds of things but but he just was said so fundamentally he said i don't know where it's going i don't know what it is but it's part of it's part of this light it's part of this mysterious beautiful thing that of life and and this universe and this whole phenomena of phenomenon of existence that i've been a part of and been able to experience and you know it's never let me down before and i'm not going to to i'm not going to lose faith now and i'm not going to decide that somehow this means life is negative or that 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 circumstances are negative or that now i can't be unconditionally happy because i'm dying and he just stayed in that for the the remaining months he had as he withered and deteriorated and he was still you know firmly rooted in wanting to live and trying to live and exploring all the approaches he could but he was just completely surrendered in a 100% yes to dying because it was a part of life 
and I, and I just, I, watching him go through it just kind of added a dimension to me, for me, to this whole reality that I'm trying to teach here about what it is to be an unconditional yes. And I, and I think just to capture it, it was, it was that, that insight he had where, where he just went, well, whatever this is, it's not separate from the miracle of, of life and existence. And we don't know where death goes. You know, it's not about like believing I'm going to live forever on the other side, or I'm going to reincarnate and therefore it's going to be okay. It wasn't that at all. It was like, I know it's going to be okay. And I'm going to live on in some form. It was that, well, that it doesn't take away from the glory and miracle of what this life has been and what it continues to be. And somehow it, it you know, it's got to all it's, it, it, it was just, and he, he died that way. And I was there, um, day he died and, and there was a three day vigil after he died where we sat with him and, and, uh, with the body, it, it was a kind of part of his spiritual tradition that that's something they did. And the presence of the po of positivity and, and, and sacredness was just overwhelming for the three days after where it just felt like he was moving on to wherever he was moving on to. And, and, and that kind of place he had stayed rooted throughout the process was still there kind of as a testament to the big yes of the cosmos. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because I know some of us, we, we get into a practice like this and our minds going, well, but what about all these bad things that are happening? Clearly things aren't a big yes. And it's like, <laughs> it's sort of like well, yeah, on, on a relative level, of course, but and and that's why we're here to help evolve the world and and change it and improve it and elevate it but but in its essence in its essence this moment is already shot through from end to end with something so spectacular that you know we have to say yes to it exactly as it is and so i'm going to maybe just take us into practice now. So I'll invite you to settle into your meditation posture. And for this practice, I just want to invite you to relinquish the idea that there's a better future waiting for you and fully invest everything in this moment right now. Nothing about your circumstances needs to change. For you to be unconditionally rooted in the positivity of your true nature right now. Nothing about your outer circumstances and nothing about your inner circumstances, meaning your thoughts, feelings, sensations, your inner world. It's all okay. It's all included.
This is the moment you've been waiting for. Embrace everything about it. Nothing is in the way. Nothing is in the way. Take a moment to notice if there's any aspect of your experience right now that you are feeling shouldn't, shouldn't be here or shouldn't be happening in meditation, doesn't belong. Maybe there's a tendency toward distraction that you wish would go away, or maybe some unsettled feelings or tensions that seem antithetical to meditation practice. These could be very subtle or they could be more obvious. But see if you can stop rejecting these parts of your experience or let go of the idea that they are somehow an obstacle to the meditation. See if you can include them in your embrace of this moment as it is. And not, and not just sort of begrudgingly accept that these experiences are here, but really see that they're not a problem. Really see that nothing that's happening is an obstacle. You're 
can really see that nothing's missing. I now want to invite you to gently begin to let go of the meditation. Move your body, look around, notice the quality of your consciousness here as we come to the end of today's practice. If the approach to meditation we've been exploring today inspires you, you are invited to tune into a 90-minute online workshop Craig will be hosting called Meditation 2.0, The Miracle of Direct Awakening. In the workshop, he'll share a powerful new approach to meditation practice and guide you in a series of brief meditation experiments so you can experience it for yourself. You can listen to that at freemeditationworkshop.com. That's freemeditationworkshop.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we hope you'll share our show with others. And please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to your favorite shows. If you have a minute to write a short review on your podcast app, we would deeply appreciate your support. You can stay connected to the show by subscribing to our newsletter at meditationchangeseverything.com. Each week, we'll send you new audios and videos from Craig, and we'll also let you know when we release new episodes of the show. For a deeper experience of Craig's approach to meditation, consider joining our Awakened Life membership program. Each month, you'll receive in-depth teachings and guidance, including a meditation workshop, four guided meditations, and a live online retreat with Craig. And when you register today, you can receive your first month for 50% off. Go to awakenedlifemembership.com to learn more and enroll. That's awakenedlifemembership.com. Check out our show notes for links to all the ways you can stay in touch with Craig's work. Meditation Changes Everything is created by Craig Hamilton, Susan Fries, Mason Ewald, Stephanie Murphy, Will Bowman, and Richard Klein. From all of us, thank you for tuning in.